couple of seconds. No problem, Charles. While it's preparing. So my wife said I need to be closer to the, the camera. So that's on a little, little bit. close. Okay. Little, there we go. Yeah, little bit. Yeah. Little bit. You look closer, great, brother. Okay. All right. All right. So. Hey, everybody. This is Charles with the Barbershop Group uh, Podcast. We are back on, back on once again. And I know that a lot of you guys are trying to catch up to everything that we are doing. We flipped a lot of our podcasts straight to YouTube. They will be uploaded to all of the audio platforms momentarily. Uh, You'll be able to listen if you're not able to watch it on YouTube or watch it in its entirety. You'll be able to listen on Spotify, iTunes, um, Anchor, uh, so many other uh, podcast apps are, are out there, and we're probably on ten or eleven of them now. So uh, be sure to be sure to catch uh, the full episode uh, on the podcast again if you can't watch it uh, here on on YouTube. But uh, today's Friday, and as you know, typically on Fridays, unless we are just absolutely swamped and dead tired, uh, Dr. Steve Poulter and I will um, kind of get an opportunity to chat a little bit, talk about some of the issues that men are facing uh, with themselves, some of the issues that men are facing with their loved ones, or just generally uh, maybe some stuff that guys are experiencing as a result of current events that we may feel like need to be addressed. Um, You know, obviously by now you guys know that Dr. Poulter is the author of The Shame Factor. If you do not have The Shame Factor, uh, you definitely want to get your hands on it. You can purchase it on, um, you can purchase it on on Amazon. Um, And and here's the the really cool thing about it. Uh, We are preparing for a men's group on shame and you will be able to purchase the book um, as part of your 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 group attendance um, with us. In fact, the book itself will be free. Uh, and so that's what's really neat. Again, Dr. Steve is the um, the author of The Shame Factor, Heal Your Deepest Fears and Set Yourself Free. It is not the kind of book that you pick up uh, once you constantly refer back to it and uh, it's just a, a great tool to have in your in your toolbox. So, Dr. Steve, how are you? Very well, Charles. It's great to be with you on a Friday. And yeah, men and shame will never exhaust the subject. No, absolutely. No, not. no. no. Absolutely We're just. Absolutely yeah. Not. Yeah, absolutely not. Um, you know, <clears throat> before we jump into. Yeah. Before we jump into everything, I, I want to just say a word. This is a little bit of my soapbox. Okay, <laughs> real, let's real, real hear it, Charles. Let's go. Let's go. And, and that's the Dr. Steve. I'm I'm worried. Uh, I'm I'm worried mm-hmm. that 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 we don't understand shame uh, as an emotion, and that yes. we don't understand uh, shame as or the result of a lack of accountability and feeling shameful. Okay. Um, In other words, as I was speaking with two of my colleagues, I I told them, I said, you know, we've reached a point in American culture where if if we see someone do something that's morally flexible, right, and we Mm -hmm. want to hold them accountable, a lot of times everybody jumps to to the defense of the person and says, hey, you're shaming that person. And I say, no, 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 no. We're holding that person accountable for bad decisions, choices, and actions that they made. So here's the difference, I say, right? It's shaming when we blame someone for something that was outside of their control that was enacted upon them, okay? So rape, for for example. Yes. Okay, Uh, you you know. Sexual um, abuse sexual abuse that is not something that's in their control uh on the flip side of it on the flip side of it then uh going out into uh you know the middle of the street and uh mooning somebody right that is within their control okay (laughs) and holding them accountable for that is not shaming that person (laughs) charles that's called consequences Consequences, yes. You know, Charles, you just brought a good point. There's good shame. Mm. Good mm. shame is your moral compass. Yeah. 
right. like the guy that uh, exploits a woman mm-hmm. and he feels yeah. feels shameful about it. Mm-hmm. And he goes, I feel shame. I go, well, that's your moral compass talking to you. Right. That is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So there, there is a difference. But anyway. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, know, no, good we'll, point. We'll talk we'll about there. stuff like that. Because <laughs> I, I just think that, you know, it's 2021. And because of some of the the cultural things that are being pushed out there so heavily right now, Dr. Steve, we're starting to mm-hmm. blur the lines between, you know, shame as an emotion and shame as, account- as, as accountability. Like, you know. Yeah, you don't just get to do whatever you want without a consequence or without somebody right. holding you accountable. See, that's different, you know. Yes. Uh, but anyway, today you have had some interesting conversations this week. <laughs> yes, I have, Charles. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and Charles, when I'm having it, I'm thinking I'm going to tell Charles about this. This is going to oh, be man. this is more universal than my office on a Wednesday night. Yeah. I'm sure. Very I'm sure. universal. Yep, yeah, I, I'm sure. So um, today we're going to talk uh, a little bit about men, ugh, communication, openness, yes. and uh, being able to really, really, um, I guess, read the writing on the wall or, or, or read the room when it comes to relationships and dating yes. and things like that. So, Doc, why don't you fill in the audience, or obviously without <laughs> divulging the identities yep. of people, why don't you fill in the audience uh, about the conversation that you had this week? Uh, Charles had two of them that were stunning. One was uh, last night, and a couple comes in. They've been dating three months. They met on the dating app Hinge which I think okay. we're all familiar with. And they've been no, dating. No, I'm, not fami- I'm not familiar with him. No, don't know that. <laughs> yeah. <one>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking Greek here, right? <laughs> so they always say to me, have you heard of it? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not living under a rock. Mm. So they've been dating three months and they broke up a week ago because she felt that he wasn't committed to her. He goes, what are you talking about? And so they reconnected. They re- got back together two days later. And so she saw our YouTube last week about how to get your guy into therapy. Mm. And she just said, listen, I want to go someplace. And like you said, talk and some accountability. What are we doing with our relationship? Where are we going? They come in last night and about five, 10 minutes in, she goes, you know, we're having a baby. And I, I do it. What? I go, Oh, I didn't know that. Mm. Her boyfriend is sitting next to her stoic really i go so how are you guys having a baby like what's going on well we're having unprotected sex Uh, i go so you're taking no birth control no birth control right zero i go mary none and i look at the the boyfriend i go jack what do you think he goes i thought we're just having sex (laughs) I just thought we're having sex. And I'm, I'm literally, he just said like that. And this guy's really? 39. Yeah. And I go, and I looked and I go, let me be, dude, when I, dude, I, let me talk to you straight up as, as a man. You're having unprotected sex. You're 39 years old. You're going to have a baby. Mm. You're going to have a baby. Mm-mm. He's like, we're just, wow. I, I didn't think of that. Mm. And she, and she says, we've been talking about having children. Yeah, he goes, we talked about getting married, too. <laughs> I go, okay, okay. Uh, okay, I go, uh, getting married, living together, having a baby. I go, you want to look at the sequence of events here? Maybe you should live together first, m- mm-hmm. marriage. But it, you can have, you can be married for years, but you're a parent for life. Right. You're right. a parent for life. And yeah. talk about communication. They left... I, he looked like he saw a ghost. I'm sure. He was not connecting, sure. having sex, a baby, and commitment. Mm-hmm. He was just having sex. Got it. Got it. So, so to your things, point about communication. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there's, there's a lot that kind of like raises the hair yeah. on my mm-hmm. neck. So they were dating for three months? Yeah, they met in November. We're now in January. Okay. Got it. So November to January three, and she is she's ready to have a baby. It, she said her time clocks on fast forward at th- thirty seven years old. Okay. Okay. So and, and I'm looking at him like, dude, you're in the red zone. 
Got it. Got it. So, all right. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Here we yeah. Go. Um, so I know that there are people out there, Doc, who have these timelines for their lives. Okay. Correct. Now, now I am I I witnessed that. And at a certain point, I tried to subscribe to that. And then mm -hmm. I realized that that's really not how life actually goes for the majority of us. OK, correct. Uh, however, if there's somebody who has that timeline and they want to stick to it, that's their choice to do so. You know, they just right. got to deal with the mental gymnastics of how to hold on to that thing that they're trying to hold on to. Right. Um, however, however when they have those timelines um they i think must be willing to when we're talking about relationships find somebody else who also has shared. a similar timeline yes it's about, a shared about, it's a shared timeline yeah, right this, this okay. is yeah you're in this together charles yeah yeah so now on the flip side of it we've got mm -hmm. the 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 man who he doesn't have timeline that's that's not okay and he hasn't considered correct the timeline or based on what you know um he hasn't maybe they they've had the conversation he just hasn't been dialed into the conversation enough to understand here we are now i'm a little bit a little bit like and see, because three months isn't a whole lot of time to me. Uh, okay, Charles, I, I was doing my best to stay professional. Yeah, I'm I sure. wanted to smack him out of love. Like, dude, yeah, she's clear. She wants to get pregnant yesterday. Yeah, you, you, you have to acknowledge the page she's on. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is what this is. So, so yeah. what what will initially come out of a lot of guys is they will. They will, as I was going in that direction, mm -hmm. they start to say, well, whoa, that's too soon. Or what's wrong yes. with you? To I'm not woman, ready. No, I'm not ready. And then, I but, need some more time. Or they'll, they'll think it, but they won't say it. Now, what we're wanting to do is yes. try to get men to the point where they recognize that. Yes. Okay. And make a decision about what it is that they see. Proactively, Charles. Okay. Not reactive. Right. Right. Because the reactive stuff is going to be like, well, oh, she got pregnant or, right. or, you know, he walks away from the relationship and now he's got child support and all of this other stuff to do mm -hmm. with emotional baggage and stuff and going back and forth, baby mama drama and whatnot, because oh, yeah. he wasn't proactive and Correct. decided which way he wanted to go. Charles spot on it, huh. he didn't talk about her he would not acknowledge her agenda but does he but but doc if i'm not mistaken here him not acknowledging her agenda who who's that who's that gonna hurt is he's gonna be a, a victim in that too isn't he i'm gonna say this is where you're gonna talk about men passive participation is negligence hmm and Martin Luther King, that was one of his strongest points. No comment is a major comment. Right, right. Passive yeah. participation as men, part of the shame factor. Charles, he goes, I just got out of a marriage. I'm like, how long ago? Oh, I got divorced and I've been single about nine months. I go, and you're dating a woman who wants to have a baby. Hmm. I go, you, you've really got to get on that. Right, right. Yeah. No, that there, there's definitely something that he hasn't taken some time to consider, and it almost, it almost sounds like you, you know, he, he's at a, well, he, obviously he is at a different level in his dating life than yeah. where she, she's moving away from dating life. Oh, right? she's gotten to marriage. Okay, and he is comfortable in this new dating. Mm -hmm. like this first this first phase of dating life like he just walked in the door she's walking out the back door right on <laughs> right with a okay. suitcase yeah 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 Ab absolutely and, and so it, it it seems as though this is and again 
you, you know, men taking control of our lives, he's yes. got to be able to recognize her thoughts and feelings, be able to communicate with her about those things, recognize his own thoughts and feelings and make a decision. Right. Right. Make a decision. decision. Charles, I, I was flabbergasted last night on his passivity. Because mm. I was thinking, I, 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 I said to him, this is a decision that's going to shape the rest of your life. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I go, and you don't be, you're, you're a father for life. You may not right. be married, but you're mm -hmm. a dad for life. That doesn't go away. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't want to follow in it. We've talked about that, Charles. You want to fall in. You want to walk into it, walk right. into it, not fall right. into it. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're not 19. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're not 19. It, it always intrigues me. Uh, in this regard, when I when I think about myself, when I look at friends, mm -hmm. when I think about uh, clients and, and colleagues, how many of us guys don't really take control of our lives, right? right. We don't con take take control of our lives, and mm -hmm. then when things happen, we play victim, or we we blame yes. someone else, right? Uh, we want to ridicule the other person. We have all of these angers and these resentments towards the other person because we simply did not check in uh, to ourselves, right? I'm sorry, Charles. No, it's a busy, it's a busy morning for oh, the beat. Oh, man. <laughs> Can you put the dogs in the crate? Oh, my God. So I, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> Life. No, okay. I'm taking responsibility for my dogs here barking. Nope. It's, <laughs> hey, do, dogs, I'm, uh, you know, and it, it's funny, Dr. Steve. Uh, there are so many therapists uh, and psychologists and counselors out there right now because of the pandemic. I think a lot <laughs> of their clients have gotten familiar with their dogs at this point. Right. You, you know, I got two beagles and they think there's uh, girls. We're, we're having a discussion about men. Come on. <laughs> Lighten up. <laughs> Oh my goodness. You know, yeah, I uh, mean, just, I, I know so many people who are like, oh, my clients know my dog now. And it's like, well, you know what? Yeah. You, you just yeah. added another human level, um, yeah. a human level. So that's all right. Um, but, you know, there's so many of us who we don't take control of our lives. Right. Okay. And, and we, Charles, we, yeah. Okay. There's a video out right now about Tiger Woods. He thought, who, yes. who's the authority yes. in his life? Mm -hmm. When his father passed, ultimately he had to become his own authority. Yeah. And Charles, that's taking responsibility. Mm -hmm. Right. And men don't take, they don't take control. Who's the authority in your life? You are. Right. You've got to be. Yeah. And you're not a victim and you're not um, passive. Mm -hmm. And I think, don't you think that a lot of us guys, we learn that really mm -hmm. late in life? Oh, I wish I could say differently. Yeah. Charles, that, <laughs> yeah. I wish I had a better answer. Charles, yeah. that's why as, as fathers, one of the things we want to get our sons to do is to be responsible. Mm -hmm. Right. If they're responsible, right. good things happen. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's something that I talk to my sons about. And, yeah. you know, at, at, this, at the same time that I talk to them about it, I'm also reminding myself, of, hey, your dad talked to you too. And guess what? It's taking you, you know, now hair yeah. is starting to get gray and you're thinking about <laughs> these things now. I, I mean, but that's just, that's, that's real. That's how it works. A, yeah. a lot of us don't begin to consider life in this way until we are middle-aged. Yeah. You know? Charles, it's the truth. That's why we need mentors in our life. Yeah. Older men to say, Hey, stay on, stay on, you know, stay on the path. Right. Take responsibility. Yeah. Let's Absolutely. keep going. Absolutely. You know, and this this um, story that you, you've told me also reminds me of another um, story of a man and a woman that's pretty popular right now in the news. Um, if any of you guys out there are familiar with, you know, the show The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. Well, yes. The Bachelorette, the, the last Bachelorette uh, who kind of ruined the whole concept of the of the show, they say. Right. Yeah. Oh my God. 
she and her, I, I guess now I have to say ex fiance, right? They've already broken up. Mm -hmm. And uh, while there's some talk in the news about them breaking up because of some infidelity, there's also talk in the news about them breaking up because she wanted to have children um, right away and he did not. And I think about right. that, Dr. Steve, and I'm like, well, wait a minute. I realize that this was made for TV stuff and all of that, but you do have, you've got producers and you've got handlers and you've got some other folks involved. You guys mean to tell me that nobody ever talked about this? Like this never came up? Right. Right. It, Charles, it, it, exactly. And like you said, men not taking responsibility or not being active. Yeah. Yeah. How, how could that? How yeah. could that not be discussed? Well, how do you how do you propose to a woman not knowing that that woman it wants to have children and when she wants to commence having children? I don't understand. What are we doing? Well, I'm going to tell you what I think, Doctor Stephen. I could be way off base here, I but agree. you know, Throw it. Yeah. You, yeah, you know. But sometimes what we men do. And I think women do it, too, but we're not talking about the women right now. We're talking about men. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes what we men do is we figure if we just hold the line long enough, then we can convince somebody to go our way. Right. Right. If we just stick to our guns, mm -hmm. it won't really be that way. It, it'll be it'll change. It'll be different. You see what I'm saying? And so I'm we not in my head. Risk. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We take the risk. But but my whole thing now, again, getting older and recognizing what life is kind of about now, my whole thing is why why do somebody like that? Why, why even? Yeah, Charles, right on. There's no peace, inner peace, when we default. Yeah. As men, we just right. kind of go. I, Charles, what you just said, I that is ninety nine percent of the men I've met. If I just kind of ride along, I'll kind of shepherd her into this pasture. No, dude, you're on a train going north. Mm. The, no, no, yeah. you're on her train. On Nothing her wrong. Train, not yours. Yeah. 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 It, it just it. I don't know how you get married and not talk about children. Right. Charles. Yeah. We both been married. We know how this works. That's yeah. part of the conversation. Right. Right. It yeah. Is you shared values, what you want to do, building a life together. Mm -hmm. right Charles, yeah. it, during the shutdown the last 10 months every month i've had a pregnancy talk really in the and last 10 i've months, had every month. every month i've had a pregnancy talk mm -hmm. and okay. the guys look at me like you and i are looking at each other like what how are you not in this conversation wow. and the woman brings the guy into the room and he's like well 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 like, mm -hmm. Okay. I go, there's no imperative whether you have children or not, but you have to make a decision. That's right. Cause she, cause she wants it. Right. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Fact, and I, you know, go to ahead, her go credit. Ahead. Yeah. But like the couple with the, the bachelorette, uh, this isn't a play. It's, it's real time. It's real time. Right. It's real time. Mm -hmm. And they blew the show up and then to say, well, I didn't know she wanted children. How crazy is that? I know, I'm sorry, I'm over here. I've got to keep my mouth shut. I, I don't I'm know. like, you guys, Dude, you guys is really, as on. you said, blew the show up to the point where they're like, hey, you know what? We may have to think about a different way to do this from now on. Uh, we had to kick you off and go get somebody else. And then right. you guys get together and now you're not together. And here's why. Whoa, yeah. that's crazy. You know, And we just ate $100 million in yeah. advertisement. Yeah. And yep the biggest fiasco and they're like oh what <laughs> yeah yeah egg, egg on your face uh bachelorette and uh and also an egg on their faces too for having gone through that process like that and i mean right. you know sometimes you don't know what you don't know but again in that circumstance come on man because you know let's face it dog Steve, people will they'll talk about money issues i hope they'll talk about religion i hope, I hope. Okay, they'll talk okay, about we're, 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 right now. We're over two. Okay, <laughs> we're over two. Okay, let's go to three. Okay, all right. Maybe, maybe, maybe they talk about politics. Maybe, okay, 
But, Maybe. But, 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 okay, but wait, but but they definitely do talk about sex. And I don't know, but it seems like to me, if you talk about sex, you also talk about what happens as a result of having sex other than an orgasm. I mean, Charles, what, what okay. else happens? <laughs> Charles, okay. You're, we're older. I'm older. It's still guys don't. I got guys in their 50s come to my office. I'm like, you're sleeping with a 34 year old. Oh, she wants to have children. Hell. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. And yeah. they look at me. No, 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 no. She knows I don't want children. No, no, no. She wants children. She thinks she's going to talk you into it. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. And then, Charles, that was earlier in the summer, that couple. Mm -hmm. She's currently pregnant. And how does how does a man feel about that now? Like, where is he in this whole process? I'm excited. I want it. I go, you better be. You better join her in this. Yeah. Yeah. But, no but Charles, you mentioned four things. Maybe politics, because that's maybe on the periphery. But that's your values, right. too. But I mean, that's yeah. core stuff also. Right. You know, that's true. But Charles, the, I tell guys, yeah, she's great sexually, but uh, go, go below the surface. This is going to go somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, man, that's something. And, you know, it's 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 a crazy thing that we're having this conversation because I have a and I have a, a colleague who um, was married and, um, you know, her ex just kind of strung her along, you, you know, mm -hmm. she wanted to have children and um, it, it didn't happen. And, and, you know, you're talking about years of marriage and I'm just kind of like, why would you do this? What's happening in you right. for you to do this to someone else? You know, because ultimately mm -hmm. we got to, got to make it reflexive. We got to get to what's going on in the guy that he can't confront this particular thing. Charles, next week, we're going to talk about the mother factor. Mm. How to set limits with your partner and deal with her disappointment. Yeah. Men yeah. and female disappointment are like kryptonite. Yeah. I've yeah. got more guy. Uh, Charles, it's been 10 months. I've got over 10 guys that pregnancy. Eight of them backdoored in it just kind of fell into it mm, just fell into it yeah right they say they're excited but their behavior doesn't reflect that mm. right and they, and i've seen that before where you know you just kind of going along to get along type, type of thing right yeah and and it's unfortunate because you know in that particular uh case there are many, many of those relationships and or marriages will end in divorce um, because right. there really wasn't a whole lot there foundationally right. uh, for for the guy. The growth. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. He didn't think about it. And a lot of us men, see, we don't talk about Dr. Steve. We don't typically talk about what we desire and what we want and what we see for ourselves in relationships in a healthy right. way. Right, right. Right. We don't we don't get there. We know we want somebody that's got a great body, beautiful. She's good in bed. You know, she's that trophy piece that everybody's like, dude, how'd you pull that off? Right. That's what. We, right. You know, yeah. and then maybe you want to add it because of millennials or Generation XZ, XYZs or mm -hmm. whatever else. You know, now they want somebody who's business savvy and stuff like that um, to a certain degree, because they really don't want that woman who's business savvy to out earn them Damn. right that's right. the thing um there you go but yeah it's just gosh man i mean charles this is it this is okay charles and i've got all uh, races this isn't the demographics is wide open it's men mm -hmm. and yeah and we're talking guys in their 30s and above you know 30s my 20 somethings are more responsible. Like, no, 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 I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. I got a guy 29, him, his girlfriend, like he goes, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. And he's being responsible with it. And guess what? The relationship reflects that because she yeah. feels cared for. He goes, honey, let right. me, let's wait till we get in our thirties 
And like you said, build a foundation. Right. And by the way, Charles, most right. of these couples, first time baby, not a second time. Okay. So there's, so you and I both know there's a lot of fantasy for guys. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Get a puppy. I say get Absolutely. a puppy. That'll help you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think too, you, you know, we need men who can talk to men about how the relationship changes as right. a result of children. Mm-hmm. You know? And because because I, I think that like there are some men who they know how the relationship is going to change and they don't want children. Right. But if that's the case, then don't get with somebody who does because she's not going to stop. She's going to keep going, keep going, keep going uh, to get you to do that. And then when you when you don't do it and you spent years with her, she's going to be like, OK, Peter, you just ruined my life. You took years oh. away from me. Right. Charles, I, what you just said. Oof, male indifference. I understand why women get mad. But mm. it's, it's really prevalent. That's why we got to talk to men and consequences. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. The and, guys and come in the office. Yeah. 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 No, you know, one of the things that I, I, I think about and I think it's good for men to really, really just sit with this for a minute is, you know, regarding this whole thing about I want children, you know, the woman wants children. I don't, I don't understand why or I didn't think we were going to have kids or whatever it is. Man, it, it boils down to simple biology. Ovaries have a time limit. Okay. That, yeah, it has an expiration date. Time. It's got an expiration date on it. Okay. That, that, yep. gosh, I hate, there, there's an expiration mm-hmm. date on it. Okay. And so you can't look at it the same way um, right. uh, as you would, you know, like just, just, I'm just going to casually date or we're just going to, we're going to be together, but we're just going to do this. And then, no, you got to consider that you are talking yes. to a person who part of her, part of her being, part of her existence has, if she wants children, that is, it has an expiration date, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't think as guys, we really, really think about it that way. You know, Charles, I don't think we, it's so right on. We're not thinking about it that way. We think we haven't, you know, the guys, the guy may be 34. Oh, I've got till 50. No, mm-hmm. she's got yeah. two more years. Right. Right. Yeah. That, that's, that's very, very true. And, and I, I think I also see an instance where some guys who, you know, they'll, like you said, they'll want to be older and they'll look back to, to have children, but you know, um, we're not promised tomorrow like that. And, right, and I'm not, I'm not yeah. saying that, you know, as a as a 45 year old man, um, uh, that you're not going to have a long life and be able to t- spend time with your toddler and, and see that person grow up and graduate from college and stuff like that. I'm not saying that. However, you don't know. And I don't think that it's really, really a healthy uh, decision to right. put your partner in that position and really to put yourself in that position you, you know Charles, Charles that's right on I have another couple they just got engaged I said if you love her she wants to have children either do it or let her go right yeah yeah absolutely and, and you know, he said I, he, what's, he, what he, he agreed said? he agreed yeah, that's good that's good yeah. but he, he also owned it mm-hmm. she was I want to get married and have children I'm like, you know, if you don't want to do that, let her go. Right. Yep. Let her go. If you love her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, you're right. You're you're very right about that. And I, I I think one of the things that we men, and this could be a separate episode, but I think one of the things we men have to do in heterosexual relationships, right, is we have to be willing to, I don't want to say take a loss, but we have to be willing to get out of someone else's way right yes um yes. a lot of us guys you know here's a hard question right you know are you really good for that person's mental health for their 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 overall health and well-being right so if you're honest with yourself you'll you'll take a look at that and you know if, and if you say oh, no, i'm not good for that person's well-being you need to exit Right. And own it. Take and responsibility it. Yeah. for it. Yeah, yeah. Charles, that's really, that's empowering. 
Are right. we good for each other? Are we really good for each other? Boy, right. that talk about a reality check. Okay, there you go. There you go. So talk about emotional yeah. sobriety, right? It's unfortunate, Doctor Steve, that um, you know these conversations kind of seem to to be prevalent um, right now. I understand why they are prevalent. I understand yeah. why they are prevalent for the women. I understand uh, also where guys are getting stuck. Um, and you know, one of the things I, I want to kind of put out there as we're running running out of time uh, today is just that. I think that we men, when it comes to relationships and, and uh, to, you know, being involved with other folks, we have to be willing to look at them differently. We've got to stop looking yes. at, yeah, we've got to stop looking mm -hmm. at relationships the way we look at, you know, the game as win or loss um, right. and start looking at relationships as growth. Okay. Whether, whether we remain with that person or not, um, yes. we've got to start looking for the growth opportunities that we have had or are having with that individual. And sometimes that growth means going in a different direction, something being cut off or whatever. I mean, a, a really, really clear and simple yeah. example is nobody stays in high school forever. You don't stay in college forever. If your intent is to graduate, you know, you're sad that you're leaving behind your alma mater, but you grew. That's right. See? It changed and, you. It changed right. you. Yeah. And, and so you can't be uh, afraid uh, to look at the relationship in terms of, you know what, it was here for a time and I experienced this in it and it was a growing opportunity. I learned from it. You can't take everybody with you. Right. Okay. Uh, that's just a selfish thing to do. Right. Uh, but, you know, it, it's just, guys, you know, if you're out there dating somebody who wants to have children and you're kind of lackluster with the idea, you need to have some courage and you need to speak up. OK, yes. you know, I, I don't that's that's one of my, my things is there's yeah. so many guys out there who can be brutes. They can say things off the cuff. They can be assholes and everything else. But you can't yeah. speak up about this particular area of your life. You need to speak up and you need to own it, stand on it. And if the person says, hey, well, I don't like it, I got to go. Then you know what? There's a own growing it. opportunity Own yeah. that. Make sure that you go find somebody who wants something similar to you, but don't right. drag don't drag her uh, yeah. to put that yeah. part of her life off um, because of you, you know, just like you don't want to be dragged, you know, right. and yeah, yeah, you don't want to be dragged. So, so it's just, this is a part of the maturation process. Okay. Um, guys, you all have been talking to me, the mind barber. I am the host of the barbershop group podcast. You all can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, uh, at the barbershop group. You can also follow me, uh, on Instagram and Facebook. Um, you can also follow uh, Dr. Steve at the Shame Factor on Instagram, as well as uh, as as well as Facebook. Um, you know, we we really try to take some time to speak to the particularities that we know men are faced with, and uh, you know, with so many people having this issue uh, regarding timelines for children and things like that. Um, yeah, you, you know, talk about it. Right. Talk about it. Get it. Get in touch, man. Um, you know, don't sit there and be a, a passive observer. This is as much your life as it is uh, her life and that yes. unborn, that unborn child's life as well. OK. Um, and so, again, I want to remind you all that you are able to get the shame factor on Amazon and uh, also keep keep. Um, Keep your eyes open. We are formulating an eight week intensive on the shame factor based on the shame factor book uh, where men will be able to join. You'll be able to get the book for free uh, as long as you commit to the eight week eight week intensive on on shame as an emotion. Um, even as we've been talking about this, whole yeah. ordeal, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, I, I think that there is some shame uh, involved in confronting. Uh, differences in a, in a relationship and what people want, right? Yeah. Yes. So you'll learn, be able to learn uh, more about that Got as it. well.
So exactly. we thank you all for, for watching today. Uh, again, you can listen on the uh, podcast apps, any of your favorite podcast apps as well. Um, but since it is Friday, as I always like to say, guys, um, you know, be sure to love yourself more, love your people more. Uh, and until next time, uh, we will talk to you then. You all be well. Um, and, and another another thing I wanted to mention before we yeah. go, Dr. Steve, yes. is um, now that the inauguration is over. Yes. Gosh, I hope people can breathe a little easier. <laughs> Charles, across the board, on across both sides the, of the aisle. OK, I, I tell Thank guys. You. Yeah. Hey. Guys, take a deep breath. We're good. Let's go. bring peace back. Yeah. Go to the beach, go to the woods, go somewhere, yeah. get you some fresh air, let your freaking shoulders down and mm -hmm. breathe. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so yes, hey, I'm with you, man. <laughs> hey, Charles, listen, thank you for letting me be okay. a guest. And listen, guys, breathe and think about what you're, where you're at, what you want to do. There's no wrong. No but if you're not thinking about it, you're playing pinball. Yeah, no doubt. As no Wayne doubt. Dyer says. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, guys, again, be well, and we will talk to you uh, next time. All right. Thank you, guys. Take care.